Hey pen people, welcome back to Down the Breather Hole. My name is Brian, and today we are going to attempt the impossible. We are going to attempt to eyedropper the pilot Kakuno. This pen has been ruled out as impossible to eyedropper because it's got holes in it. Two little holes right down there at the bottom that uh, the ink will just gush right out of. But we're not going to let any little holes stop us, right? So we're going to figure this out, hopefully. That's the plan. We'll see if this is successful or not. I really have no idea what's going to happen here. So the reason I'm doing this video, one of the reasons, is that when I showed you my whole pen collection in my last video, which I'll link up here if you want to go check it out, um, in that video I asked you, uh, pen people, what you wanted me to review next, and a lot of you said the Kakuno, and you were interested in this eyedropper idea as well. So I figured I would start with the eyedropper idea because I'm really excited about it. It sounds, I'm just, I can't wait to figure out what's going to happen. Um, but also, um, I want to do a longevity review of this. When I do an actual review, that's the kind of review it's going to be. And I have had this pen for a couple of years, but it hasn't really been in very consistent rotation for me. So I don't feel like I've used it enough to really justify a longevity review. So I'm going to try to put this back in my rotation consistently and use it a bit longer, and then I'll do a longevity review for you so you can hopefully get an idea of how this pen holds up to wear and tear. Also in my last video, I announced my first ever giveaway. I'm giving away one of my queen size pen beds. So a pen rest for two fountain pens. If you want to enter that giveaway, go ahead and check out that other video. I'll put a link down in the description as well so that the link is just easily accessible. You don't have to worry about what's floating around on the screen. The giveaway will be running until January 24th, 2022. So as of the making of this video, you've still got a little bit to enter. Um, if you're watching this way in the future, sorry. But you can still go check out that other video, see what I have in my collection, and request videos if you'd like to. Okay, without further ado, let's flip the camera around and let's get started on this. So before we get started eyedropping this Kakuno here, um, a couple of housekeeping things. We're going to go over the kinds of things you're going to need for this, and then um, we'll actually get into it. But really quick, I want to say, if you wouldn't mind just tapping the like button, that is just a really simple way to support my channel and help it to spread to more people so that more people can watch these videos. Okay, let's talk about this. So for any eyedropper job, you're going to need a syringe or eyedropper or something to fill your pen with. Silicone grease is always a good idea. It helps to seal up the threads of your pen so that you don't accidentally leak everywhere. And just in case some ink does get through the silicone grease, it's a good idea to use an O-ring as well. So that's kind of your standard stuff, and obviously you need ink. So I've got here my Mont Blanc Mystery Black. I've talked about this before. Um, I think I used it in my last eyedropper video, actually of the Twisby Swipe. I use this because it, it's a great ink, it's it's a really good ink, but it's like the least permanent ink I own, and I tend to use inks that have at least a little bit of permanence. Either that or they have to just be really cool, and because there's so many black permanent or water resistant inks out there, I just don't use this ink that much, um, even though it's a nice black. So I don't mind using it for projects like this that might get messy, where I might accidentally lose some ink. It's not going to break my heart if I lose some of this ink. So that's why we're using this ink. So for this pen, we've got two holes there that we need to stop up. And the challenge is to know how to do that. And um, I think the obvious choice would be some kind of epoxy. But I'm not ready to commit to something that permanent yet. Um, if I'm going to use resin in here, I would like to use something nicer. Maybe even color it so it has a cool color to it especially since clear resin can yellow over time, so I don't really want to end up with this ugly yellow thing in this pen. So that's why I'm going to um, use a glue gun today. It's maybe a little bit of a ghetto option, but <laughs> I think it's going to work. The glue I'm going to be using is uh, made, by, made by Gorilla, and this stuff is actually really sticky. I mean, it says right there, it's, it's actually pretty tough. I remember using glue guns as a kid and not thinking that they really stuck that well, but this stuff sticks really well. So I think it will do a perfectly good job sealing up this pen. I have no idea how it's going to react with the ink, 
but we'll just cross that bridge when we come to it. And I think, even though it's really sticky, I think I can take a ballpoint pen or something small and kind of punch the glue back out of the holes if I need to. So I think I'll be able to clean my pen out uh, of the glue if, if I ever want to eventually put resin in here. So that's why I'm using hot glue. If you are using hot glue, please don't sue me if you burn yourself. <laughs> this is at your own risk. You know, do this at your own risk um, and do it at, at, the, at the risk to your pen as well. This, if you, if you do this, obviously it's going to void any warranty of any pen. Um, this, is, this is not risk-free. I just want to point that out. So be careful both for your own sake and for your pens and for, and for your environment around you. You can see I have a cloth here to catch any ink that might spill. I am wearing an apron right now. I've recently found that that's actually pretty handy when it comes to dealing with ink. If you've got a lot of pens you're cleaning, um, if you're dealing with ink syringes and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of nice to just have that peace of mind knowing that if something splatters, I'm covered, literally. So, the first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go clean out the barrel of this pen. It's pretty dusty. I don't like when there are holes in clear pens because you get just all this dirt gets in there. So I don't want to capture that dirt inside. So I'm going to go clean this out really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, good enough. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. So I'm going to take this glue gun here and wrap it around my tripod and try not to burn myself. Um, I think what I'm going to do actually, so I'm going to inject it through these holes and then I'll just trim off the outside afterward. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try to do it this way, um, kind of vertically, um, with the hope that it will allow the, the glue to settle somewhat flat in here. So it will look somewhat less ghetto than this already is. So here we go. And I will try to keep this in the frame. It's really hard. It's not I'm focusing on at the moment. But let's see how this goes. Oh, it's going in there. Okay, there's some for that hole. Let's try this one. Okay. I don't think that glue is really going to lay flat one way or the other. I'm just going to kind of... Mm, Stir that around, make sure those holes are nice and covered up. Okay. Check that out. <laughs> All right, so now obviously we need to wait for this to cool. It doesn't take long, but um, maybe a minute or two. So I'll be right back. Okay. So it's still a little bit warm, but as you can see, it is starting to harden. I think it's hard enough that I can start to kind of trim the extra off and once I do that we'll be able to tell if I did a good job or not sealing up those holes. So I've just got my little Swiss Army knife here. I probably should have mentioned that that would be something you'd need for this. It doesn't have to be a Swiss Army knife obviously, just something um, to trim this off. It's been a while since I've sharpened this thing so this might be interesting. Wow, it's just gonna peel off. Okay, so it looks like one of the holes did better than another. I, I kind of pulled some of it out of the holes as I was trying to peel that off of there. So I'm just gonna do another round really quick. Just try to stick a little bit more glue down those holes and see if I can just make sure that they're completely full. I'll try to not make as much of a mess on the end of my pen so it's easier to get off. Sorry, it's not focused. I'll get, get that in a second. Okay, there we go. My camera really just does not know how to focus on anything, so I keep having to tell it what to do. Okay, so we'll let that cool real quick. Okay, so one of those holes looks really good and covered. I'm gonna try just a little bit more on this one and see if I can get it to go um, just a little more full. Pardon me. Okay, now let's go ahead and, sorry about that. Let's 
go ahead and wipe that off. Oh, it's too sticky. Okay, good enough though. Okay, so it's a little messy. I'm gonna try to clean it up real quick and then we'll take another look at it. Okay, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get, but it's honestly not bad. Is it beautiful? No, but um, I think it's good enough. There's not really any glue left on the outside and I think the glue on the inside will be sufficient. So let's go ahead and do our more typical kind of um, eyedroppering procedure here. Let me get one of my little O-rings. Okay, so there's our own O-ring. Um, I'm always surprised by how well they fit onto pens. This is actually a fairly narrow barrel compared to others that I've eyedroppered with these. Um, like the Twisby Swipe, that has a much beefier barrel and it still works. So these things do a pretty good job. Okay, that was pretty easy. So we've got our O-ring on there. Now let's get some silicone grease. Doesn't have to be a crazy amount, but you just want to be able to fill those threads as much as you can. Okay. That was a lot. Yeah, that was like way too much. Um, it's okay. That's what paper towels are for. Just kind of wipe it off. I just wiped off this part without the threads, mostly. Okay, so that should work. Um, you can see I still have some inky water in there. I promise I clean this out pretty thoroughly. It's just kind of a stubborn ink. And because I'm eyedroppering, I'm not going to get any of that in an ink bottle, so I'm not super worried about it. Oops. All right. Moment of truth. Suck up a good amount of ink there. I don't actually know how much is going to fit, but I just like I just like getting a lot in my syringe so I don't have to like come back midway through filling the pen. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready, I think. So far, so good. Okay, so then just put enough in there to leave room for the, the threads. You don't want to cover the threads with ink. Okay. Let's screw this on. Whoa, I dipped it down too quickly. There we go. All right, so there we go. There is our eyedroppered Kakuno, and it looks like looks like we're good. I think I completely sealed that. You can see how the ink is kind of getting around the sides of the glue, but it's not penetrating in any way. There's no air bubbles connecting ink to the outside world or anything like that so it worked and it actually looks kind of symmetrical almost like an intentional design so that's actually kind of fun all right so there is our very full pilot kakuno so um let me get some paper and we will see how it writes with all of this in there okay so let's get started with our writing sample and we'll see how this does. I'm interested to know how it will do with the writing sample, and I'm gonna do kind of a long one today, so I think it'll give us a good idea of how this pen will hold up to having all of this ink putting pressure on the nib and feed, because even if you do have a plastic airtight pen, it doesn't necessarily mean that the feed and the nib are going to be very accommodating to a pen full of ink so it might change the behavior of this pen. We'll see. I'm hoping that it's gonna write just fine, but a long uh, kind of writing sample will help us know if there's gonna be any burping or things like that that are gonna present problems. 
Okay, here we go. Okay, so this one's a little bit tough to fit in the frame, but I'll just read it to you anyway. So this is a poem by David Lee, who was a poet from my home state of Utah. He was actually the Utah State Poet, poet Laureate for a while. And um, I think he's originally from Texas, though. He has a really cool Texas accent, which is kind of funny, actually, because I'm pretty sure he studied classical English poetry, like John Milton or something. And he has like a PhD. Anyway, so you've got like this Texan rancher type dude who studied Milton and it's just cool to hear him read poetry because he's got this cool accent and stuff. So this poem is called Psalm written after reading Cormac McCarthy and taking a three-hour climb to the top of Pine Valley Mountain. That's the title. Kind of a funny long title. But here's the poem. Right here, Lord, tether me to my shadow like a fat spavined mule stuck sideways in tank mud bawling for eternity. At midnight, when the stars slip their traces and race the moon like wild horses to their deaths in the darkness, let my horse song twine with the night wind. May the bray of today's laughter fall like a pitchy top branch from a tall yellow pine, straight down like winter sleet to the mountain's bent and trembling knees. It's really hard for me to recite this poem without channeling David Lee's Texas accent. It's just so fitting for what he does. Anyway, um, I, I tried to resist though, so hopefully <laughs> uh, you didn't hear anything that sounds like a bad impression of somebody from Texas. Anyway, so this is, he, he calls it a psalm. So it's written in kind of that psalmic, formal, prayer-like language, but it's actually, so the, the epigraph, um, he's got this little epigraph, which is a little quote at the top of the poem to kind of like help us understand the poem. And it's from Kierkegaard, I think is how you say his name. And the quote is, laughter is a form of prayer. And so you can see in here a lot of imagery about laughter. And so it's interesting to kind of juxtapose laughter and prayer together. And I think what he's trying to do here is just capture what it's like to have a really, really good day where there's a lot of lightheartedness light and laughter and goodness. And it just kind of seems like he's trying to hold on to that. You know, he says, right here, Lord, tether me to my shadow. He's basically saying, this was perfect. Um, this hike, uh, everything we did today was perfect. This is exactly where I want to be with these people laughing in nature, and I don't want to move on from that. And obviously he knows he needs to move on from it, but I think that this poem is his way of trying to capture that feeling so he can come back to it and can remain with it a little longer. That's one of the interesting things about poetry is that if there's a poem you love, it can channel a very specific set of emotions for you over and over again every time you read it, uh, at least from my experience. This poem is just really enchanting to me. It just sounds very musical, and I just love the sound of it. And every time I read it, it's almost like, I don't know, it's just spellbinding. So I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so let's talk about how this pen wrote as an eyedropper pen. It was great. No burping. Doesn't mean it won't burp in the future. Um, burping is kind of more common with eyedropper pens. But I was able to write all of this without burping, which is great. So that's um, that's a really good start. And it had a really controlled ink flow as well. This is a fine, uh, a fine nib, and it wrote like a fine. It wasn't writing wetter than it usually does or anything. It was still a very controlled fine line. 
So that tells me that the feed is able to handle all of this very well. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. Hey guys, me from the future. Uh, I gotta tell you something. So about 30 minutes after I thought I finished this video, I was reading the Bible because one of my goals this year is to read through the Old Testament, which I've never done completely before. So I'm just sitting there with my pilot Kakuno, just like tracing the lines as I go. It's kind of how I keep myself focused as I read. I use a pen or something, just kind of just do this underlining motion as I go to help me stay focused. So the back of the, um, <laughs> it's not actually together right now, but uh, the back of the pen body, I was just like going under the, under the lines and suddenly big black swipe, <laughs> unintentional inky underline. Upon closer inspection, I saw that one of the holes, because there's two in the bottom of this, one of them was leaking a little bit. One of them was sealed perfectly. One of them was leaking just a little bit. And I think I know why. You might recall me struggling to get the extra glue off the outside after I sealed the inside. And I think as I was doing that, because hot glue is kind of rubbery when it dries, um, it's kind of flexible. So I think what I was doing as I was like trying to scrape off the outside, I think it was actually pulling on the inside and breaking it loose from the pen and breaking the seal that I had there. So the seal wasn't great. And so I'm going to do this again. We'll try it again and we're going to do it a little differently this time and we'll see if it works. So second time's the charm, right? So as you can see here, I have made a frightening mess of trying to figure this out. There is carnage everywhere. And I filmed all of this, but none of it worked. So I thought I would spare you the 10 minutes of footage that I have from that. Um, I tried injecting it down there, like down into the barrel, um, like this with a big straw, try to Oh, little straw. None of that worked. Um, I have thoroughly gunked up my pen with glue. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. We are just going to do what we did the first time. And this time I'm just going to put more glue in. That's about it. So hopefully more glue is helpful and hopefully I can just figure out a way to trim the excess off without putting a lot of pressure that's going to wiggle the seal back and forth and break the seal. And here we go. Let's just go ahead and just really glue that in there and then wipe off the excess while it's still warm, at least as much of it as I can. Okay, now let's do the other side. Okay. Okay, it looks like as I'm wiping off the excess, it is pulling it out of the holes a little bit. But my hope is that I can just put enough glue in there so that it won't matter. So I'm gonna let this cool for a second so that I'm not mushing this glue around. Um, I'll let this cool and then I will inject again to just fill any cracks that might still be there. Okay, so that's cooled nicely. Let's just see how much more glue we can fit in here. Doesn't look like much. Um, okay, there we go. I think we'll call it good there. Hopefully there's enough glue. Sure looks like it. So we'll fill that up. And I also wanna say, I realized that I could probably like when I, when I decide to take this glue out next time to, I don't know if I want to do a better job or if I'm just done having this be an eyedropper pen, I think I can just swipe 
a cotton swab with some goo gone or something in there to get the this cloudiness out um, that is um, stuck to the side of the pen. But for now, we're just going to go with what we've got and see how it works. Okay, I'm going to clean up all the carnage later, but let's go ahead and fill this thing up with ink. And instead of just saying, yippee, it worked, and running off um, <laughs> and calling it a day, I'm going to pay more attention before I finish this round of this video um, to make sure that this is working the way it's supposed to. So I know what to tell you guys as far as if I can recommend doing it this way or not. Okay. Oh goodness. <laughs> what a mess. What a mess. All right. And this is going to be messy too because there's a lot of grease on there. Focus. There we go. All right. Yeah, this is way more grease than you typically need for an eyedropper pen. I just wanted to be on the safe side because I'm not using an O-ring. All right. Okay, so looks good. It actually looks kind of interesting with um, more glue in there. I wish it was, you know, even and nice looking, but at least it's thick and hopefully won't let any ink through. But I'm just going to leave it sitting... Um, kind of nib up for a while and we'll just see what happens there if it will um if ink will start to creep its way down here or if it's good to go okay i have let it settle for a while and i have also kind of pounded it on my hand and on my desk a little bit to kind of get the ink to settle down into that seal as far down as it's going to go and this is interesting so the ink leaked down right here but that's actually not where the holes are. The holes are over here and over here. So since I was injecting through the holes, that is where the glue is thickest. It didn't get as thick over here. So it left some air bubbles that let ink through. But as far as the seal uh, of these holes goes, it looks like it's pretty darn secure. I don't think this is going to go anywhere anytime soon. I think I would call this a success. It was a messy success. It's not exactly a pretty success, but I would consider this pen officially eyedroppered. And um, I, I do think, though, that the best way to go with this will be to, to cover up these holes and then inject some real resin, craft resin, aluminite, something like that down in here. Something that is thinner, uh, takes longer to cure, all that kind of stuff, so that it can just really settle in there and, for one, kind of come up with a, a flat, clean line, and, uh, and also just kind of make sure there's no um, openings um, that can let ink through. But for now, this is good enough. This will be fun to play around with. Um, if you want to try it out, um, play around with this too, go for it, but be careful and know that your pen might come out the other side not looking quite as um, pristine as it did when you began, but it's just a cheap Kakuno, so um, it's not really the end of the world if something happens to it. So go for it. Let me know how it goes. And I'll talk to you later.